Hi, I'm going to go over how to create a Windows Docker image from a Docker file using Docker Build. I'm currently in a folder called Containers on my C drive. Under that folder, I have two more folders called Container 1 and Container 2. Each folder contains the files necessary to build a container image, but in slightly different ways. So let's get started. If I run Docker Images, you can see that I have already downloaded the latest Microsoft Windows Server Core and IIS images. For this demo, I'm going to be using the IIS image as my base image. Under my Container 1 folder, you will see that I have a Docker file which contains the instructions for building a new image in a folder called www. This contains an index.html file that I want to copy to my new image. If I open that up, you can see that it simply has an h1 tag saying hello world. Now let's go ahead and open up the Docker file. The instructions that we put in this Docker file are going to describe how we want our container image to be configured at build time. First, on line 3, I'm using the from instruction to specify which container image to use as the base image. Images are created by adding layers on top of already existing images, and our new image is going to be a new layer on top of the IIS image. Next, on line 6, I'm using the copy instruction to specify that I want to copy the www root folder to C inetpub www root. I don't have to specify the full path to my local files because Docker build will reference files and folders relative to the Docker file that I reference at build time. Also make note of the slashes I'm using in the destination path. Docker will only recognize forward slashes in file paths. On lines 9 through 12, I'm going to use the run instruction to specify a series of commands to run. Since the default shell is the command prompt, I'm using the PowerShell command followed by the PowerShell code that I wish to run. Here, I'm removing the iisstart.htm and iisstart.png files that come default with IIS. Then, importing the web administration module. And finally, creating a new app pool called test pool. I'm not going to be doing anything with this app pool. I just want to demonstrate a few PowerShell commands for this demo. Next, on line 15, I'm using the expose instruction to specify that I want the container to listen for connections on port 80. However, I have this line commented out because the IIS container image already exposes port 80, so this isn't necessary. I just wanted to show what it would look like if you needed to use it. Finally, on line 18, I have the entry point instruction, which specifies the image's main command to run. Here it is telling the image to run service monitor against the W3SVC service. When this is specified, once the W3SVC service is stopped, the container will stop as well. I have also commented this line out because the IIS image already uses this as an entry point. Okay, let's switch back out of the Docker file. Before we run our build, I want to show you the options that are available for the Docker build command. If you run docker build dash dash help, you will see a list of the available options you can use. I'm going to be using the dash T option to give my new image a friendly name. Now if we run docker build and specify container1 as the name and point it to the container1 folder in my current directory, docker will find the docker file in that folder and start building the image. We can see the progress as it steps through each of the instructions in the docker file, starting with the base image to use, then copying the www root folder. And now it's running the PowerShell commands. Now that the build is complete, let's run Docker images again. At the top of the list, we can see the container1 image that was just created. Now let's go ahead and run that container. I'm going to use docker run with dash d to run container1 in the background, and I'm going to store the container ID in a variable to use later. When we run docker ps, we can see our new container running from the container1 image. Let's use docker exec to run some PowerShell to see the contents of the www root folder inside this container. There is the index file, and the IIS start files have been deleted. Now let's use docker exec to run ipconfig so we can get the IP address of this container, so we can browse to it in a web browser. 
If I paste that address into my web browser, we are presented with the Hello World page. Now let's go back to VS Code. If I list the contents of my Container2 folder, you can see that I still have a www root folder and a Docker file. This time, however, I have set up my Docker file a little different. First, let's run Docker history against my Container1 image. Here, we can see each of the layers that make up this container image. What I wanted to show you here was that each one of those instructions I ran in my Docker file gets added as a separate layer. And because I used the run instruction before each of my PowerShell commands, it ran each of those as a different layer. So let's look at how we can make that more efficient. If I open my Container2 Docker file, there are a couple of differences from the last one. First, on line 6, I'm using shell to specify my default shell that I want my run commands to run in. By default, the shell would be the command prompt. But because I know all my commands are PowerShell commands, and to require less typing, I want to specify PowerShell. The other difference is lines 12 through 15. I'm doing my run instruction a little different here. Since each run instruction created a different layer last time, I want to group all of my PowerShell commands into one run block. To accomplish this, I'm using semicolons as statement separators to separate my PowerShell commands. Docker files use backslashes as line continuation characters, so I'm also using those so that I can put each of my commands in a separate line to make it easier to read. Now let's go back and run docker build against the container2 folder. This time I'm going to specify a tag to use in the name by adding a colon, then v2 to the image name. If you don't specify a tag, it will default to latest. You can see here on step 4, it is running all the PowerShell commands under one run step instead of many. You will also probably notice that it runs a little bit quicker. Now if I run Docker images again, we can see the new container2 image with the tag of v2. Let's go ahead and run that container in the background and get its IP address just like last time. We can see our new container2 v2 running, and if I copy the IP address, paste it into a browser again. You'll notice that the IP address is different. We can now see Hello World version 2.0 displayed. Now if I run Docker history against the two containers, you can see that container 2 has fewer layers than container 1 because we grouped the run commands instead of separating them out. And that's how to create a Windows Docker image from a Docker file using Docker build.